Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jim at Peach, and we're going to begin the webinar in just a few moments. While we're waiting to begin, we ask you to please take the poll that you see on the screen in front of you, and we will begin in just a moment or two. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jim Blankstein from PEGE, and we want to thank you for joining us today for our National Revenue Programs webinar. As you can see, there's a poll on this computer screen, and we ask that if you haven't already answered the poll that you do, it'll help us tailor some of our messaging to today's presentation and get a better understanding of who is joining us. And in just a few minutes, I'll be introducing some of the colleagues with me in the room. But before I begin, I'm going to let you know I'm going to be muting all of your phone lines from my end. And later on in the webinar, um, we will open up the lines uh, for questions. However, we would prefer that you use the chat feature on the computer as a way of asking your questions. That way, we'll be able to make sure that not only do we see your questions, but all of the other um, participants in today's webinar are able to see your questions. We'd also ask that you keep your school-specific questions, just jot them down and reach out to us independently at the end of the webinar uh, to a member of the PEACH team, and instead that you ask questions that you think would be relevant not only to your school um, and your situation, but could possibly be appropriate for other schools and other situations. All right, and now I'd like to introduce Amy Katz, who is PEACH Executive Director, to introduce herself and a few opening words. Amy? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I want to echo Jim's welcome to all of you and tell you that we are tremendously energized uh, by your interest uh, and your participation in this webinar, but mostly by your interest in these programs, because we're very excited about them, and, and we're glad that you share our enthusiasm. Um, we sit here on Erev Tisha B'Av, and Erev Tisha B'Av is always a very difficult day, as it's Tisha B'Av uh, in the Jewish calendar. But it is acutely more difficult for us because we all have Israel on our minds. Um, we're all distracted by the events and the war and the terrible loss of life. And that weighs heavily on, on us. Uh, our hearts and minds are certainly with our brothers and sisters in Israel, and we wish, uh, we wish well and uh, we wish safety to the residents there, and we wish speedy recovery to all those who've been injured in the war on all sides. Um, as we think about what we can do, and I'm sure all of us think in these last couple of weeks about what we can do for Israel. So certainly there are things that we can do and we've all been approached or we all have, whether it's a Facebook message or an email message, uh, suggesting how we can help Israel. We also need to think about what we can do here in America that in fact helps Israel. And one of the things that I think a lot about is the role of our day schools uh, in strengthening relationships with Israel and strengthening our families to be able to be not only advocates for Israel, but to be to strengthen their commitment. Um, so when I think about what we can do here at PEACH, I think about the work that we do. Uh, I think about how we can fortify our Jewish day schools and thereby grow the number of Jewish kids who will be educated in those schools. We know from lots of studies and from the work and from our own personal experiences that 
Day schools are one of the best ways in which to connect young Jews to the state of Israel and, how, and to prepare uh, young students to be the Jewish leaders tomorrow. This can only happen, as we know, through vibrant Jewish day schools, and it can only happen, we think, is if we do our job right. And so our job at PEACH, and indeed our mission, is to strengthen the sustainability of Jewish day schools. And there's no way better for us to do it than through the partnerships and relationships that we have in the field that enable us to bring you proven and outcome-driven programs. Our 16 years of history uh, and working with the field has taught us how to best make learning stick. Um, so these programs feature what we knew, know best team learning, coaching, and peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Those things are the keys to creating long-term uh, commitment and long-term sustainability. In fact, a recent study that we commissioned confirms that when we combine team learning with lay leaders and professionals in coaching, the long-term change is not only possible, but it actually takes hold. We're also very proud of the relationship that we have with the Abi Klai Foundation. And that relationship and our ability to leverage that relationship for you is something that makes us uh, very happy, something we're happy to share with you. In a few minutes, you'll get to hear from Dan Perla, the Abi Chai Program Officer for Day School Finance. Peach believes that the Abi Chai match for the program enrollment is not only a validation of Peach's good work over these last years, but it's also a demonstrated commitment to you, a demonstrated commitment to reduce the cost of programming for our schools. And for us, when we think about how to bring value to schools, we not only think about the value that we can bring through our program, but we think about the value we can bring in terms of the relationships and leveraging those for you. And in this particular case, we're really happy to partner with the Avichai Foundation to be able to make this uh, least financial match available to you. And on that note, I want to thank you again for participating. I want to wish all of you an easy fast. I want us to all wish and pray for uh, peace in Israel, Shalom al Yisrael, and I will now ask Jim Blankstein to share with you our agenda for today. Thank you very much, Amy. For those of you who joined the call a few minutes late, we would ask that you do answer the poll. We're going to leave it up and active over the next several minutes. What we can see is that we have a good mix of um, development, admission, head of school, as well as lay leaders on the phone, and we welcome all of you. Today our goal is to give you some brief introductions to the program um, the, here from the Avi Chai Foundation, as Amy just mentioned, and then we will give you an overview of each of the three programs. We'll talk about the cost of those programs and how the Avi Chai match will help enable your uh, enrollment. We'll also walk you through the application process and the documentation that goes along with it, and we'll conclude today by answering your questions. As I mentioned earlier, we'd ask that you put your questions up on the computer screen in the chat box, which is now active. I also want to mention that at the conclusion of today's webinar, if you want a copy of the presentation, all you need to do is email solomon at peach.org, request your copy, and we'll make sure to send you a copy of that. So with that, I would like to introduce some of the members of the team who have been working hard to develop these programs and who will be seeing these programs through. So we've just heard from Amy Katz, our Executive Director. You also see Sharon and Tori on our screen. They're responsible for developing the application process as well as, all, as, well as the back-end systems and tools that we will be using throughout the process. Um, Solomon Flax, who's joining us in the room today, is your key contact through the application process for any logistical questions that you may have. And he's always available through email as well as phone. And you can find all of his contact information on the PEAGE website. You also are interested, I'm sure, in the program selection team, those people that will be reviewing the applications when they are complete. So reviewing the applications for Ati Dainu, which is our newest recruitment and retention program, and our governance and fundraising academy, is a team led by Dr. Harry Bloom. It includes Alana and Erica. And the Generations National Program is led by Jill Goldenberg, with the assistance of Susie and Francine from her team. But it takes more than just the people sitting within the PEACH walls to make these programs happen and bring them to life. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Dan Perla, the Program Officer for the Ivy Chi Foundation in charge of day school finance. Dan? 
then you may need to remember to unmute yourself. And to do that, am I need you to star six. There we go. Am, I, am I unmuted? Okay. <laughs> These are technical difficulties here. Um, so thank you very much for that introduction, Jim. And uh, Amy, as always, thank you. It's always wonderful working with you and the PEACH team. Um, so let me start on that note with um, why uh, Avichai has chosen to partner with PEACH. So for, as Amy referenced, 16 years now, PEACH has really been um, a leading authority uh, in day schools, in Jewish day schools, and certainly the leading authority in day school finance. And um, we've had many years of working in a very collaborative, collegial, and productive manner with Peach. And uh, we're looking forward to that relationship growing and, uh, and achieving the wonderful results we, we know it can. Um, Peach really has an extraordinary team of professionals um, uh, under one roof. And um, the institutional expertise of Peach really should not be understated um, in programs like these. Um, and as I've learned uh, in the three and a half years that I've been at Avichai, um, context means everything. Um, every community is different. Very often schools within the same community have significant uh, contextual differences. Um, and and Peej really understands, as well as anyone really understands, those, those differences. And as a result, can craft programs that really work for a very, very large group of, of schools. Um, so we're delighted to be partnering with with uh, with Peach uh, once again on on these revenue academies. Um, why revenue academies? Um, well, uh, we've got some experience in programs dealing with day school finance, and in the three and a half years that I've been here, um, we've had two flagship programs that that we've helped support. One has been the Peach Generations program, which is focused on endowment building. And the other was the benchmarking program, uh, very ably led by um, Harry Bloom when he was at Yeshiva University uh, and, and now, and now uh, at Peach. Uh, we have the benefit of Harry's expertise in helping to craft um, Atidenu and GFA. Um, what we learned through the benchmarking program, among other things, was that there was significant opportunity on the revenue side of the school's um, income statement, if you will. Uh, and while not to minimize the uh, potential for cost savings at, uh, at schools around the country, um, we found that schools really got behind opportunities to, to boost their revenues, that donors really got behind those types of opportunities, and that in many ways they were uh, revenue opportunities were um, more widely embraced by schools and by donors than were cost savings opportunities. Uh, to it, there were, there are, there were, and there are significant opportunities on the revenue side. What we found through benchmarking and through our experience with other programs was that two of the widely most embraced revenue-enhancing initiatives were fundraising, governance and fundraising, and um, endowment building. And therefore, uh, we decided fairly early on in structuring a program with PEJ that those would be the two primary interventions we would focus. And indeed, we've essentially, PEACH has essentially created two discrete programs with similar characteristics, but still very discrete programs around those two very, very important interventions where we know, uh, one, um, schools have tremendous opportunity, and two, schools typically have tremendous interest in those opportunities and pursuing those opportunities. Um, with respect to endowment building, um, you know, our, our experience with Generations was a very positive one, and that's proven to be a very successful program um, with, with nearly $25 million having been raised from a relatively small group of schools, um, and, and that number kind of continues to grow every day. Um, and so uh, it made sense, obviously, to, to pursue a second uh, round of Generations and, and to, to target it on a national basis to target schools on a national basis. Um, let me discuss for a minute the match component here. Um, Avichai for some time now has uh, typically as a, as a requirement of its funding um, required our partners to come up with match funding. Or we've been involved in, in locating partners to, um, to uh, split the cost of programs with us. So in general, we have a 50% rule that we prefer not to exceed 50% of the cost of the program, of any program, 
part of this is, uh, is because, as many of you know, Abichai will be spending down by the end of 2019, and we're looking to cultivate partners. And we think by bringing them in early, uh, those partners have more uh, a greater chance of sustaining uh, the full cost of, of these and other programs after 2019. And part is because we want participants to have a little bit of skin in the game. So uh, that's been a requirement generally. I think in the case of uh, this match, we've also found that the language of match, when we use it in our matching grant programs, um, is very, very powerful with donors, with participants. It sort of changes, it, it changes the culture, if you will. Um, when when people feel like there's uh, that there's an opportunity for um, a dollar funding or in this case program funding based on an individual or a community's uh, ability to come up with the other 50 percent of funding um, and uh, I think we've seen time and time and again that 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 match component is really effective at at uh, at engaging participants and frankly at engaging other donors as well um, the last thing I want to just um, touch upon is what we hope to accomplish uh, in these programs. Um, and, and obviously there are a lot of things that we hope to accomplish. Um, one, is, one is ultimately we hope that this will lead to, after the programs are done within some reasonable period of time, hopefully a 12-month period, that schools will see a measurable increase. If they've participated in GFA, they'll see a measurable, and we would define that probably as 10% or more, increase in their fundraising. If they participated in, in, um, in Atidenu, we would hope they would see it within a year of completion of the program, see a 10% or greater increase in, in uh, early year enrollment. We could say kindergarten enrollment or, or early year enrollment. Um, but I think more generally, we're hoping that uh, schools acquire better skills at um, the types of activities that we know are precursors to this growth in fundraising or this growth in enrollment. Right? Uh, on the enrollment side, as you'll hear about, things like increased school tours and increased inquiries. And, and on the fundraising side, um, increased board giving um, and increase in the number of solicitations that are done. But steps that you know, we would call blocking, blocking and tackling, and <laughs> to use a football, meta football metaphor, that what we really believe are indicators of success. Um, and again, we are, are reasonably certain that schools will, um, will um, meet these indicators, will meet these benchmarks, and, and we're hopeful, I would say cautiously optimistic, that if they do that, then we'll look back uh, a year after the program's done and see some real tangible, measurable, quantifiable increases um, in, in these specific revenue areas. And with that, um, let me turn it back to Jim. Thank you very much, Dan, for the overview and for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. My pleasure. We're now going to move into an overview of the actual program that we've been talking about. And we would, again, remind you that you can feel free to pose questions at any point um, throughout the webinar on the chat section on the website. So I want to provide you with a brief overview of our three programs before turning it over to the program managers. Um, the Ati Denu program, which is our premier recruitment and retention program, has a singular goal. Well, bifurcated goal. It's to increase student enrollment and increase um, current student retention. And we know that for most schools, that is one of their, if not their top priority, one of their top three priorities. The duration of that program is 18 months. And the outcomes that one would expect when, upon completion of the program would be about a 10% improvement in enrollment one year following the completion, understanding that there's a lag time between implementing some of the strategies that you'll learn in the program and when you will actually see the results. In just a few minutes, we'll be going over the costs more specifically of the program, but you can see the bottom line school contribution for this program is $17,750. So you can imagine the strong ROI that you can achieve on this kind of investment by recruiting just one new student. The governance and fundraising program is designed to strengthen the governance and the fundraising and really increase your major gift capacity. This, like the first program, is also an 18-month program. Again, we expect to see an average increase of about 10% in your annual campaign revenue. Again, because of the lag time, we like to say one year after the program completion. 
and the school contribution to this program is the same as the Atidenu at $17,750. Again, we really believe that with the addition of um, a 10% increase, the ROI on this in type of investment is really significant for you. And lastly, the Generations National, which is the premier and groundbreaking endowment program for Jewish day schools in the country that Peach began. Um, its goal is to create a long-term revenue source for schools to help you fund your budget, something that almost self-fulfills, that, um, that Jill will speak to a little bit more in just a few minutes. This program, because of its intensity, is actually over three years, unlike the first two programs that we talked about. And there are specific benchmarks that we will help schools to achieve along the way, with the $2,000 benchmark being at about halfway through, $4,000 at the end of the three years. And we believe that by continuing at this pace and continuing to stay focused on endowment, your schools could raise between $25,000 and $30,000 per student after 10 years, which does put it in the top 25% of, of private schools in the country for endowment. And the cost to, for this program is $50,000. And again, you can just imagine that the ROI, based on um, the numbers that I just reviewed, is quite strong. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Harry Bloom. And Harry is going to now introduce to you in greater detail our recruitment and retention program, Hachi Dana. Harry? Thank you, Jim, and good afternoon. Um, I'd like to start by talking a little bit about the track record of PEAGE's involvement in recruitment and retention programming. Uh, most recently, uh, 34 schools participated in a highly successful uh, May 2014 Recruitment and Retention Academy experience. We have uh, clear testimonials that schools are already accruing significant gains from that program. As PEAGE has spent over 10 years uh, offering admission conferences, uh, and pipeline management, which is a recruitment and retention management programming. And most recently, as Dan Perla mentioned, um, I have been managing the PGYU benchmarking and coaching program, which has delivered results consistent with or greater than the kind of results that we're committed to in the program. Next, I'd like to talk about the goals of the program. As Dan mentioned, our target is 10% improvement in new enrollment the year following the program. And if a school has uh, attrition or uh, you know, higher than national norms, we would work as well to uh, reduce that attrition and achieve retention uh, at a 10% improvement level. Underneath the covers, we would be working with schools to build their capabilities and the drivers of enrollment and retention, including market analysis and segmentation, branding, defining your value proposition, creating parent ambassadorship programs, implementing word of mouth marketing, managing data, and retention management and pipeline management. So it's really designed to build capabilities. Additionally, I'd like to now talk about the process of the program, which begins with a rigorous self-assessment using a proprietary new PEACH tool uh, that will identify the strengths and weaknesses of your program and help then uh, focus your participation in two summit meetings, one involving four uh, team members, all your key professionals, head of school, admission director, marketing communication director, and lay leader who's involved in ambassadorship would be the first program. And then midway through the 18 months, there would be a second uh, event focused on your professionals. Expert coaching is a key part of the program. Each school would get seven days of expert coaching to help them set goals, develop plans that are comprehensive to achieve those goals, and monitor uh, on a quarterly basis progress toward achieving the 10% the improvement goals. PEAGE would provide program management to make sure that all of the elements of the program are working for you, and we have a lot of experience doing that. In addition to uh, thinking about that, you might be saying, is this the program for, for my school? And I guess the two key questions are, do you have excess capacity that you would like to fill? 
and the need to increase new enrollment or enhance student retention. If so, you should consider applying for this program. Long-term impact would be to build on the 10% improvement and, and exceed it over a period of time because you've now got the capability uh, to do so because we've built your capacity. So that concludes my discussion of Atidenu. Note any questions you have and we'll answer them uh, later. I'd like to shift gears now to the second program uh, that I have the honor of, of directing. That's the Governance and Fundraising Academy. This has a long track record of success embodied in the leadership and fundraising academies that PEACH has implemented in New York City, Los Angeles, Montreal, and currently in Miami, Dallas, and Houston, and in some cases more than once in these communities. They have achieved, participating schools have achieved the goals that we're targeting. So let's talk about those goals. One, strengthening the culture of philanthropy within your board and entire school community. Two, achieving a minimum of 10% growth in annual campaign revenue the year following your program. Three, building your capacity to identify and cultivate major gifts in a systematic way by embracing moves management as a norm. And finally, building readiness for endowment. In terms of the process of the program, it's very similar to Ati Dana. It begins with rigorous self-assessments using PEAG governance tools and also development assessment tools. Secondly, we would have two summit meetings. The first involves four profession, uh, two, three professionals, uh, the head of school, your development chair, uh, actually two professionals and two lay leaders, your board chair and your development committee chair in a two-day summit exposed to the leading experts in how to improve the capacity of your school. Then midway through the program, there would be a second summit with your development director and your head of school. Seven days of expert coaching would help you set targets, develop plans, and then implement those plans, monitoring with PEACH program management on a quarterly basis and taking corrective action as needed. This is the winning formula that has proven itself in our work. I'd now like to talk about how you decide if the program is for your school. If you have a need to embrace more strongly a culture of philanthropy, if you'd like to improve the performance of your development committee, if you have a desire to systematically improve your fundraising results, if you want to embrace in a more systematic way the ability to identify, cultivate major gifts, and if you desire to be ready for endowment, this is the right program for you to apply to. Long term, we expect you to build on these goals to continue to embrace uh, the culture of philanthropy, make that capacity building a continuous norm, uh, achieve top tier performance, top third of day schools, which can be $2,500 to $4,000 per student per year, and achieve major giving on an ongoing basis as a norm that your board embraces, and be ready to continuously build endowment. I'd like to now introduce my colleague, Jill Goldenberg, to talk about Generations National. Hi, everybody. I hope that uh, you're doing well and that you are learning a lot. Um, I have the privilege of directing our Generations program, which has been a pilot program for the last uh, just under three years, actually, in Los Angeles, Baltimore, New York, and Boston. And as Dan mentioned, we are almost at $25 million. Um, the, the schools have raised much to some uh, some skeptics uh, surprised. Uh, the schools have raised half of that in outright money, uh, directly uh, checks written to the, the endowment fund, and half has, has been in legacy pledges. Most of the 30 schools have met our program and dollar benchmarks, and we've learned a lot um, during the course of the last uh, just under three years about what it takes to actually enable day schools to change a culture of philanthropy to enable them to raise endowment money. So what, do you, what are the goals? So what, what, are we, what are we trying to achieve with you? 
essentially the program teaches your team how to move from what many schools have as a single line, which is an annual campaign, or um, possibly a double line campaign, which is uh, an annual and a, and a capital, and integrate endowment building into that so that it's embedded into your strategic development work. We teach you how to do integrated um, cultivation and solicitation and stewardship. And it, the program is intended to be a kickstart to your long-term endowment building. You know, we, we look at this $4,000 goal that was mentioned earlier um, as a wonderful goal for the end of the three years, but we all know that $4,000 does not an endowment make for students. So um, the idea is that this program really embeds uh, the type of success that you would see in endowment building so that you continue to do it. Um, we had, a, we had a, a coach once say to us that endowment building is a way of life. It's not a campaign. It doesn't have an end. It just continues. And that is what we are trying to do with, with this program. So how do we do that? So the curriculum is a combination of both online webinars and in-person um, conferences. And throughout the three years, you will have an individualized coach, somebody, an individual coach who will customize your school's needs um, and work with you to achieve the goals that we are trying to achieve. Um, we will also uh, provide you with program management support. Um, the TEACH team here has a great deal of expertise in endowment building and in ensuring that your school gets the support that you need. The other component of this is that um, there are incentive grants um, that will enable you to uh, get some of your money back if you actually make your goals. We like that one. We, thought, we think that, uh, that the schools are, are, very, um, are very motivated by um, the program's opportunity, and we want to reward you for that. Um, so who should do this? So if you're looking to change the way you fund your budget, if you are not worrying about making payroll on a month-to-month -month basis, and you really want your school to have stability so that you're looking, your board and your leadership are looking at what kind of school will be there for the grandchildren of the current kindergartners, of the kindergartners who are starting your school this coming year, what kind of school will you have for their grandchildren? Endowment also allows you the chance to make your school more affordable. You can actually use the, what we usually use is a 5% um, payout rate. You can use that money to, um, to give tuition assistance. You can use it for program enhancements. You can use it to, ex to expand your curriculum. Um, 21st century consumers are looking to you to be 21st century schools, and this allows you to compete. So what's the long-term impact? We are looking really for a culture change. Um, this is really intended to enable you to continue to raise your endowment and get a significant income from it. We also hear, and many of you know, that um, we are at, the, the, uh, at a real inflection point. This is the largest wealth transfer in legacy giving ever in the history of the world. And we want our day schools to be part of it. We don't want you to miss out. We, because if you don't ask, someone else will. And it is so critical for your donors that you are the people who are saying to them, we know you care so deeply about this school. Make sure that it lives on into perpetuity. Obviously, endowment allows you to have less pressure to make budget each year. And boy, couldn't we all do with a little less pressure. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to change the way that you're, you're, um, you're funding your program enhancements. I'm going to turn it to Jim, who's going to give a quick uh, uh, moment on the programs that you think you would be interested in. So we've just launched a new poll. We can see that many of you are quickly answering that. We thank you. We're going to give you just a second to answer the question, but also start to think about what questions you want to make sure that we answer in just a few minutes. We can see that there's already a couple of questions that have been posted in the chat board, and we encourage you to continue to populate that over the next couple of minutes. On our end, what we can see is that we have a nice breadth of people on the phone 
everybody from head of school to admission and development officers as well as lay leaders and operation heads as well as um, a few other people. And the responses to which program do we do you believe that would be best for your school is almost evenly split. And that's very helpful for us as we answer questions and continue to walk you through the rest of our presentation. I'm going to close this poll in just about 10 seconds so that we can continue on, but we do appreciate everybody answering this. So I'm going to now talk a little bit more about the cost and, um, and how to find funds to pay for your share of, uh, to match Adichai. So first and foremost, um, we really want to give a huge, huge appreciation um, to, to the Adichai Foundation, and in particular, um, Dan, who has really shepherded um, these programs. And we really just can't thank him enough. And, and the children, those grandchildren of the current kindergartners, have a, a real debt to thank uh, the Abbey High Foundation. Um, the matching funds really will allow you to participate in one or two programs. So let me be really careful and explain that the programs are, um, there, there are, you, you can apply for two, for all, you could apply for all three programs. You won't get accepted into all three programs. You could do Achi Denu and either governance and fundraising or generations. You can't do governance and fundraising and generations at the same time. Governance and fundraising is intended to be um, a precursor type of program for endowment building. But if your school is accepted into, into um, IT Denu and you also um, uh, want to do one of the two uh, development enhancement programs um, we, and, and you're accepted, then you could participate in both. So how do you find the money? Where do you find the money to, uh, to actually match these funds? So first and foremost, um, some schools have told us that they are putting it in their annual budget um, or that in particular for this coming year, since many schools' budgets are already set, um, they are looking for other, other sources, but certainly for the, um, for the second and third, depending on the program, um, years of the, that the program covers, you are actually not expected to pay for the program up front. The, the program payment is, year, is um, for Atidenu and GSA. It's over two fiscal years, and for Generations National, it's over three. So um, another source that you might look at is your reserves, if you have reserves. Um, another, and, and actually, going back to the annual budget, if you have money in your budget for professional development, this is a fantastic way of, um, of building capacity of your, of your team. Um, I see a, a question that I'm actually going to answer really quickly that, that came up, um, that, the, that the, all, all of our approaches are team approaches. They are not actually separated. So the lay leaders and the, and the professionals are not separated. Um, so the annual budget, if you have a professional development budget in there, it is obviously intended for your professionals, but your, your lay leaders will build their skills as well. Um, so again, as I mentioned, some schools do have reserves. Some schools have endowment funds, and this is a great use to, uh, to um, increase your endowment funds. I want to talk a little bit about designated funding, because this is actually really an opportunity that many of you um, can use. And in particular, you may know of donors who are very specifically committed to one of these three, or more than, more than one, of these three areas of strengthening of your school. So if you have a donor who is very, very interested in enrollment growth, this would be a, a particularly good opportunity to go to that donor and ask them to fund your participation in IPDNU. Similarly for GFA um, and for endowment building for generations. So there, these are really great opportunities for you to actually go to your, your closest in and ask them to support your ability to make an even stronger school. I'm going to turn it to Harry to talk a little bit about federations and foundations opportunities. Thank you, Jill. So th this is, these programs are ideal asks for partners, including federations and central agencies and local foundations that invest in day schools. Why? 
really four reasons. One, they offer a high return on philanthropic dollar, which these kinds of organizations really want to see. Secondly, they build your capacity uh, to be more self-sufficient in the future. Third, uh, PEAGE offers proven rigorous program management. And finally, having a match from a prestigious foundation like Avichai is something they really uh, love to do. Three communities already are exemplifying this. Uh, there are foundations in Chicago and federations in Metro West New Jersey and Miami that are already stepping forward to help their schools uh, fund these efforts. So PEGE would be delighted to help you craft presentations or support asks. Uh, we just want you to call on us to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Harry and Jill. We're now going to move into the application part of our presentation today. And this is really just to give you a very high level overview of what it takes to apply and what some of the expectations are. So the application process begins right on our website, which is peach.org slash national revenue program, where you can also find additional um, literature on the programs. And I know someone asked a question about additional literature. You'll be able to download more information um, about the three programs together on one sheet, as well as individual product sheets. So you would visit our website. You would visit the special URL. And at the bottom of the page, you'll find a link that says application. And you begin by just filling out the simple fields on here, telling us who's filling it out, who your head of school is. And we will then, following up on this um, form being filled out, send you two emails. The first one will be a link to the application portal that we'll discuss in just one second. And the second one is going to be to the online application. And the online application, we are using SurveyMonkey as our um, tool to capture your school's information. That, that email comes directly from SurveyMonkey. So if you request an application and you do not receive an email both from PEGE and SurveyMonkey, we encourage you to check your junk or spam folder. And if you still can't find it, you can send Solomon at solomon at peach.org an email, and we'll make sure to send you out the link again. So once you've requested the application, you're sent, as I mentioned, the link to the portal. And on the portal, we suggest that you begin with downloading three things. The first one is a checklist to ensure that you don't miss any steps in the application process. The second one is a document that shows you which JData content is going to be required. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a little bit more detail in just a second. And the last one is a list of the online application questions. We estimate that the online application shouldn't take any longer than about two hours to complete once you have all of the information that you need to answer the questions. And that's why we encourage you to download the questions. And based on which program or programs you're applying to, you'll be asked a different set of questions. So not everybody will answer the same exact question. So I mentioned JData. The JData is the, what we recommend the first step in the application process as you are filling out information. And the reason is that JData begins paint the picture of your school, and it'll start to ask you some of the questions that you're going to need to be thinking about for the rest of the online application. Each of the three programs has a different set of criteria that needs to be answered, but they all have the general information tab in common, as well as some other bits of information like the revenue box. If you have any questions about how to fill out your JData, information or how to log into JData. Um, on our website, there is the contact information for JData. And so you'll be able to get everything you need and all the assistance you need there. The online application or the survey monkey that I mentioned before is a separate link. That link you'll be receiving, again, directly from SurveyMonkey. And we do need to call out that when you're filling out the application, you can begin and stop throughout but when you are completing a page, you need to complete that entire page and click Next at the bottom in order for the content on that page to be saved so that you can then move to the next page. So we would hate for anybody to lose any information. So when you fill out a page, again, make sure you fill out that entire page and then click Next, and that will save everything from the previous screen. I'm now going to ask Jill and Harry to very briefly highlight 
A few of the types of questions and information that we're going to be looking for in this online application for their specific program. Harry, would you like to start? Thank you, Jim. So the, uh, the key for the IT Danu program is going to be, number one, is building enrollment one of your top three strategic priorities? And will the IT Danu program be you know, at, at sort of toward the top of the list of focus during the 18-month period of time of the program? Next, we're going to try to ascertain if your leadership team, uh, the professionals and the lay who are involved in ambassadorship, are really going to be committed and capable of working with PEG and the coaches to achieve the program benefit. Um, and thirdly, we're going to ascertain, based on an analysis of your situation, whether your school has the potential, in light of demographics, in light of your program, et cetera, to actually achieve the goals of the program. Those are the three questions. In terms of the GFA program, the first criterion, again, is will devotion to strengthening the governance and fundraising of your school be one of the top three school strategic priorities during the duration of the program? And will this program be at the top of that list? Number two, will your leadership team be stable enough, committed enough, this is uh, professionals and lay, to actually work with Peach and our coaches to make the program successful? And finally, does, does your school have the ability to increase its fundraising and governance capacity? The answer is yes, there's a very good chance we will accept you. Now to Jill to talk about generation. So not surprisingly, um, making a program a priority is actually also a um, top criteria that we will be looking at for your generation's national application. So first and foremost, where does it fit? And who, who at your school is committed to endowment building? Is it your board? Is it your leadership? Is it your um, development director? Is it your, your head of school? Is it all of them? D, all of the above is the right answer. Um, but we are, we are really looking for um, an understanding that endowment building actually matters. Because what we, have, what we have learned in the pilot program is that the single biggest predictor of success is your leadership like everything, leadership, 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 but it absolutely is exactly correct here that without the leadership making endowment building a priority, it does not happen. Um, we are looking to see that your head of school is, is, is stable. Are your finances stable? Are you managing some major transition? Are you dealing with something enormous that will, will Hunt out the endowment building as a priority. Um, that is also um, a, a good predictor of, of success or not success. Um, and lastly, what is your track record in development? Are the majority of your board members involved in relational fundraising, relational development? Not just will you buy a table at a dinner, but actually giving you names of prospects, engaging in cultivation um, with your donors, engaging in solicitation. We don't actually require that every board member solicit, although wouldn't that be nice? Um, but indeed, we are looking for schools where the fiduciary responsibilities of the board members are very clean and very clear that every single board member has that as a responsibility. Jim? Thank you, Jill. The next part that we just want to quickly highlight for you is the deposit and fee for the application process. So much like many of your schools, we do require an application fee and deposit for each program to which you are applying. However, if you decide not to enroll or for some reason are not accepted into a program, your deposit is fully refundable. The $100 application fee is not. And lastly, we have an interview. This is a phone interview with a member of the PEACH staff and your school team. The real goal of this is twofold. One, for us to learn more about your school, to answer some questions if we um, have questions that have been raised throughout the application process, but also for you to be able to answer, ask questions of us so that we can explain the program or the specific 
benefit that may be helpful for you and your school. We also are going to want to understand what is your current track record. Depending on which program you're applying to, we want to know what current activities you've already undertaken or what may be on your dashboard for the future that you were considering to either supplement or augment this program. As you can see on the slide, based on which program it is that you apply to, there will be different people from the school on the phone. So that's a very high level overview of the application process. There are a few other documents that we'll be looking for. One would be a board resolution indicating that whichever program or programs you decide to apply to and ultimately enroll, that your board is committed to making that program or programs one of the top three priorities for your school for the duration of those programs. In addition, we ask for things like development plan, marketing plan, or strategic plans, again, based on a specific program. So we'd now like to start answering some of the questions that have been asked. And by all means, feel free to type in additional questions. We did receive a few of them by email just prior to today's webinar. So one person has asked, and I'm going to answer this question again to make sure everybody heard the answer, is there any written literature about the program that you can have access to? By visiting peach.org slash national revenue program, there are downloadable product sheets both an overview of all three programs and individual sheets available for each program that you can take a look at, share amongst your school, socialize, et cetera. Another question that's come in is, do schools need to be somewhat established, or could a very new school be successful? Jill, do you want to take a stab at that? Sure. So for generations, um, I would say that there would have to be some extenuating circumstances to um, really enable a brand new school to be accepted into generations. We are looking for a track record of successful development. We are looking for board members who do know their, their roles, and we're looking for um, schools that, that have um, really prioritized endowment. And it, it, it may be a little more difficult for a brand new school to, have, to, to convince us of that. It, it, I'm going to turn it to Harry to answer the question for the other two programs. It, it, the answer is yes, it's, it's certainly possible because both Sati Denu and GFA are developmental programs. It is possible that a new school uh, could be accepted to the program, but it would have to fulfill the criteria that we talked about otherwise. We received an email asking a question, what are the key deadlines for the application process? We have a rolling admission for each of the programs, which means that we have already begun to review applications that have been submitted. And each program has only a limited number of slots available. So we encourage you to get your applications in as quickly as possible to ensure that, uh, that your spot is held for the program that you are interested in. We do have, because of the kickoff of these programs in early 2015, um, a hard deadline of October 6th by which all applications need to be um, in-house. And we, will, we may need to have some of the phone interviews after that date, but we will need all of your paperwork completed by that date. Another question that was emailed in is, what do we need to do to, to receive the Avi Chai Foundation Matching Enrollment Grant? Jill, do you want to answer that one? Sure. What you need to do is apply and be accepted. Um, there's no membership to PEJ that you need to pay. There's, there's not anything specific. Um, other than be accepted to the program. All right. Thank you. Another question that has come in is, if I participated in the Recruitment and Retention Academy in Chicago, um, can I also participate in Ati Denu? Harry, can you answer that? Sure, Jim. The answer is absolutely yes. Um, and uh, recently, we sent out an email uh, which indicated that there could be some crediting of fees or some uh, additional options for schools that did so that would enhance the value of the program? But the answer is yes. And we had a question written in asking if a high school could apply to the Ati Denu program. Harry? Absolutely. High schools are welcome. Great. Another person wrote in and asked that if my school is part of Create a Jewish Legacy, can we also participate in Generations National? Jill? So the answer is definitely yes. The programs are complementary, but I definitely encourage um, you to give me a call. I'd like to talk to you about your specific community and your specific and where you are um, in Create a Jewish Legacy. 
Um, they are definitely, you can definitely do both of them, but um, I would definitely want to talk to you about it. Great. We also just received an email. Someone wanted to know what makes up a completed application file. So for us to review your application, what it will require is that your JData has been submitted, that your online application or survey monkey has been submitted, and that you will have had your application, I'm sorry, your interview, your phone interview as well. In addition to that, we will be looking for a board resolution indicating that your board is committed to seeing this program through and making it a top priority over the tenure of the program. Someone else has asked, um, regarding the summits, why are they lay leader? Why are lay leaders and staff um, separated? I believe we answered that before, but I'll just reiterate the answer, which is that at each of the summits, we actually believe that a team that is made up of lay leaders and professional staff is the best way to learn. It ensures traction and stickiness, and so that's why we do not separate out the learning, but in fact, we fuse them together as school teams. Someone else asked, where do I find a coach? Jill, would you like to answer that? Sure. That's actually one of um, one of PJ's roles is that we um, we source and vet and recommend coaches to you. Um, we have a great deal of experience in working with coaches in each of the three areas um, that these programs are focused on, um, and we bring you the expertise that that it really is the best of the best, and we. We are looking to um, ensure that your coaching is exactly tailored to what you need. Um, and that, that's actually a, a big component of the program management, is, that, is, is our working with you to select and, um, and work with your coach. Great. Harry, a question is coming. What is the value of team learning, and how can teams learn from each other at um, learning summits or training? Can you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. So the value of your team learning as a team is that it cuts down the cycle time of improvement. In other words, if everybody is gaining access to the same information and is able to uh, develop plans, which we try to encourage at our summits and after our summits, then the acceleration of learning and capacity building is, is profound. In terms of cross-team learning, we have learned that best practice flows very nimbly from one school to another. In other words, when you're sitting in a room with schools encountering the same challenges and one school has developed sort of a better mousetrap, that is embraced by the other schools and, again, accelerates learning and creates a community of learners that will continue after the summits and after our program is over, and we've seen this time and time again, uh, that that's the way to accelerate and maintain high learning. And I can definitely attest to that with uh, the generations uh, schools as well. That Great. they've really learned a lot from each other. Thank you, Jill and Harry, for your time today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. As you can see, we have one final slide. We encourage you to visit teach.org slash national revenue programs to learn about our program to see our extensive FAQ that we have there, to read some of the testimonials, and to begin the application process. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, the deadline is October, 14, October 6th of 2014, but because of our rolling admission, we encourage you to submit your application as early as possible. If you have any questions at all about the process um, throughout, by all means, feel free to contact Solomon at solomon at peach.org. And if you'd like a copy of today's presentation, all you need to do is email Solomon, and we'll make sure to send it out to you this afternoon. With that, we thank each of you for your time and attention. We hope that you've learned something. We hope that we'll be able to work with you in the future, and we wish you all a good week. Thank you. The leader has disconnected. The conference will be terminated in two minutes.